What a bike. Hey everyone, welcome to another video in our Adventure Motorcycle Review Series. I'm Eric Lang with Ride Adventures. I've been guiding and riding motorcycle trips around the world for over 10 years now. And today I have at my disposal one of the greatest releases into the adventure bike market in recent years, KTM 790 Adventure R model. Great bike for pavement, great bike for riding in the dirt. What's that, a hill right there? I think I'm gonna go do some riding, take you along with me and talk about this bike and what you can expect if you got one yourself. So come along. All right, here we are, opportunity galore to ride this beautiful machine. Kind of a fun thing if you look back at the, the weight that we all had, you know, KTM rumors of this bike, the 790 Adventure R model, or I guess it was just, we didn't know if it was gonna be an R or an S when we first started hearing about it, but um, yeah, the rumors started, you know, a few years before it came out, and then you get sneak shots and things like that showing up. The anticipation was fun, but what's even more fun now is the riding of this bike, which I'm glad to do. So one of the first things people um, ask us when they're about to reserve one of our rentals or pick a bike for a tour or an upgrade or something like that is like, which bike is best for them? And you know, my answer has always been that pick the bike that fits your stature and of course your budget best. Because they're all, they're all the bikes that we're offering for the areas we're riding in ultimate very, capable bikes for the situation and the terrain and whatnot but you know given that point about picking a bike that matches your stature um, I have to admit this is not a bike that would be a first pick for me love it don't tell me it don't don't get me wrong here I think it's a great bike but uh, just as a point of reference I am six foot three ish and around 240 pounds depending on the number of burritos I ate that week and so a little bit bigger than an average, I think, and therefore a little bit too big for this bike. You know, so in this category, you got a twin cylinder adventure bike getting up over that 400 pounds. My preference is to really just go up over 500 pounds then and get, get a bike that fits my stature and physique a little bit more closely. You might want to also. Now, this is, again, not saying I don't enjoy the KTM. 790 Adventure R. I do enjoy the R model, of course, much more than the standard, uh, given that it's a little bit taller, the R model, and that you've got uh, a little more suspension travel and ground clearance, plus just the pure adjustability of this suspension setup, the WP 48 millimeter forks and all the clickers that are so easily accessible up there, right on top of the forks. So great to just be able to reach down and change my dampening and rebound and preload and everything like that right there so again I pick a bike that fits your stature don't put yourself in a situation where you've got to reach or overreach to get to the ground but pick you know what makes sense for you don't don't find yourself over budgeted so to speak with and uh, bike size such that you're intimidated intimidated to ride your own bike or that you can lead to other issues while riding because of being sort of overmatched for what you're riding. I would myself ride up more often the 1290 Super Adventure R or Honda Africa Twin um, Adventure Sports. Um, but again, I'm <laughs> enjoying this one plenty because of things like, well, just really in this category, KTM fitted it out with the best parts. Um, there's not a whole lot of upgrading I think a rider would need to do to really have a, you know, the, the top end bike given this category and this spend and so um, athletic nimble I do love the overall balance what they did with the fuel tank keeping um, you know the weight down low for one which is nice on the bike to have that lower but also then keeps you with a little more space between the knees a little bit more of a blade like uh, dirt bike like feeling because you don't have a big heavy tank up top like you do on some other bikes so great job there KTM um, you know, circling back to that suspension topic, you know, riding is a ever-changing, dynamic situation, and it's really hard to say that any one particular suspension setting is going to address all your situations if you're doing this kind of riding, if you're bouncing from pavement to dirt back and forth and doing stuff like this. I mean, it's constantly changing. Uh, so the harder it is for someone to 
make those changes to their suspension you know if you're having to get down on the ground and hit the clickers with screwdrivers and stuff like that um you know, the less likely you are to take the time to fit it out for this part of your ride or for the temperatures of the day as the oil warms up and thins out loosen the compression and rebound in the morning when everything's cold and kind of stiff if you're in the twisties back and forth maybe you don't want the bike to be nodding and bowing and ducking back as you go forward and back with the weight and everything so again great adjustability makes for a more tunable situation with ease and something that riders will take advantage of so nice component to the rear Suspension does require um, an Allen wrench on the 790 Adventure R model. Um, quick Allen wrench is pretty easy and quick to have available. They didn't. It's kind of fun to see how they lined up everything in the in the in the suspension, the frame, and the assembly, and everything like that. It's like you can see why it got real tight in there. In case you didn't quite have the space to put an actual hand dial, like a thumb grip or something, to be able to just crank it down. So you do have to bust out the Allen, Allen wrench to adjust the preload and such in the rear, but again, pretty easy thing to do. You're probably always going to have a basic tool kit like the one that KTM provides with you anyway. So what else about this bike? Let's see, you know, and compared to other, okay, yeah, it's at the, the price. Okay, let's talk about that. Is it overpriced? Well, no, I mean, it is what it is. It's definitely on the more expensive end of uh, pricing when compared to some of the Japanese bikes that might fit into this category. We've done other comparisons talking about the Honda CB500X and the V-Stroms and stuff, a couple other bikes out there that also will get you around in a similar fashion and for a lower price but you really do see and feel when you're around this KTM uh, a fit and finish shall we say um, that is top end. I, I just don't see anything better out there right now, honestly. Uh, when you compare it to the new Yamaha uh, Tenere 700, another great bike, athletic, capable, and everything like that. But we compare it to, to the $3,500 to $4,000 more expensive 790 Adventure here, you can see these little things, not just the quality of the componentry and the, 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 the different. Um, systems used but also just the way buttons are and the way it's finished off paint and different lines and fasteners and things like that you do just see a more crisp finish on the KTM that you know part of justifying an extra few to four thousand dollars or whatever it is so um, I do like the fact that uh, for these wheel set this wheel set on the 790 adventure they gave us the tubeless uh, option right off the bat you know I would always on a big adventure ride take a spare at least a spare front tube with me in case you dent your front wheel um, and there low for no longer with the tubeless are able to create a seal around that bead and keep air in there it's not so bad just to have a spare 21 inch front tube there with you to throw in and get you through to a situation where you're able to fix the, uh, the, the wheel damage but um yeah, I, I guess that fairly rare occasion, these are, they seem to be fairly durable wheels for us. And, uh, given uh, that you don't have real frequent dents or damage, what a great feature it is to have the ease of just a quick plug on the side of the road. If you pick up a nail, you can throw a plug in some air and in five to ten minutes and be up and riding again instead of having to remove the whole wheel and do all that stuff so um of course of course then again there is that engine leader in the class all you would want i'm already backing off because there's a yeah just ah 790 what a great parallel twin engine ktm put out again got the right vibrations and the funk and the feel and the frequencies and the pulsations the growl the grind i just love the sound and the feel of that engine in addition to what it does when I want to lurch forward a little bit so um, can't see anything really wrong you know real interesting thing about this bike is going to be how it holds up over time you know we've mentioned a few cons and some of the downsides to it you know little weirdnesses that aren't so bad about this bike uh, difficult oil cap to get off um, half fuel tank readings and stuff like that you can see our other videos on that talking about the slight negatives to this bike but 
you know, if KTM got it together on this one, if they're making an engine and a transmission that holds up uh, without giving riders lots of problems or anything, uh, if this bike proves itself in our rental operations and isn't a thorn in our side, leaving people stranded in places, you know, if, if they've got a reliable bike here, if it's anywhere near as reliable as the Hondas and the Yamahas and whatnot are, I mean, hats off to you, KTM, because this is just an athletic, fun, powerful bike. Again, in its, in its middleweight weight class, we're going to say middleweight by being twin cylinder, 400 to 500 pounds, that's what I'm referring to as middleweight. In that class, it's got the title for the uh, the power champion, about, I believe, 20 horsepower more than its greatest rival, which would probably be like an F700 or F750 GS BMW. A lot more power there. Um, just the suspension components and quality and the way this bike feels, the agility, the options to do all the switching and controls between traction control on and off and ABS and rally mode and everything. I mean, in rally mode, I'm able to just sit there and switch between with the toggling of the arrows on the left buttons of the control here, I can control the sensitivity of the traction control. Just a couple clicks like that. So you want to be able to steer with the back end a little bit. Uh, back off the sensitivity down to like the number one if you're getting into a situation where you might like that advantage of traction control dial it up a few more clicks and uh, the systems will keep the bike in line for you so yeah um really hard to say anything negative you know again back to the negatives people are reporting a few things we've had riders find a false neutral between fourth and fifth gear um, some writers out there on the internet are, internet are reporting um, rear shock failures and early that's happening which might be a result of uh, design it might be an issue where KTM put a little too much heat in the catalytic converter right next to those rear shock components so that they're having some failures but you know hey no bike has ever been perfect. Yes, there are probably more reliable brands in terms of history. You know, Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki, Yamaha, just making these top quality bikes that have the least failures. Um, if KTM got anywhere near that category, if they got anywhere near that status that the other big four are making in terms of quality and reliability, this is a grand slam hit it out of the park winner that anyone is going to enjoy. What a great bike once again made by Big Orange KTM. They nail it every time it seems like. Maybe especially with this bike, especially in that middleweight adventure bike class over 400 pounds, under 500 twin cylinders. Sometimes I don't want to ride the biggest bike and sometimes the smallest dirt bikes, the single cylinders aren't appropriate for the situation. This one's right in the middle. It's going to serve a lot of riders well so I'm going to keep riding. If you want to come along, do so. But uh, if you pick up one of these, let us know what you think in the comments below. What's your opinion on this bike? I think it's a pretty great one. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm going to go ride some more.